There are a lot of soldering videos on the internet and a lot of them tell you, you know, you got to hold your mouth a certain way or do this on a full moon or whatever. Um, but let's, let's do a video where I'm going to do everything I can wrong and still come out with a good soldering joint just to show what the critical aspects of soldering are. Okay, so I've got my joint wrapped up. I'm going to use ordinary uh, rosin core solder and hold my old big berth of the, the uh, soldering iron. Okay, so let's solder this up. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Keep track of what those mistakes are and we'll go over them and I'll show you what I did wrong and what I did right and we'll analyze the final joint. So what two things did I do right? Well, the first one is that I had enough heat to saturate the joint, but the most important is that I started out with a clean workpiece. If you work for NASA, this is uh, absolutely unacceptable. But if you're just doing, you know, a repair to your car wiring, boat, trailer, something like that, this is a passable joint. I mean, there's no way I could break that by pulling on it. Uh, it's going to be a solid connection. How do I know that? Well, there's one thing that really makes a joint, a good joint, is that you have solder that penetrates through the joint. There are no gaps and voids. All of the copper strands have been wetted with solder. And we'll cut it open, we'll take a look, and we'll see if that's true. And if it is true, this would be a passable joint for, for most of your home DIY projects. <coughs> Okay, let's see if we can put this and hold this in focus. There, as you can see, there's no voids, no gaps. Um, it is clean all the way through. There we go. And yeah, so again, you know, if you're doing low voltage outdoor lighting or bearing wires for your uh, drip system or something like that, this joint would work. Yeah, it's not beautiful and there, you should do a better job, but again, there's no mystery to soldering. If you have a clean workpiece and you have enough heat to saturate the parts, uh, you can get away with a, a lot. 
Okay, well that was it. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your home DIY soldering projects.